Hi there folks, Kenneth Kerr at Esther Hazy Online once again and welcome to another session here at Pharmasave and today we're going to be chatting with Ryan. Ryan, how you doing? Good as always. Good, you're enjoying the summer? I am. I think we breezed right on by spring, didn't we? I think we did, yeah. I think we did. So what are you going to be talking to us about today, Ryan? Well, today's topic is going to be pharmacist prescribing, uh, what it means, uh, what it entails and the kind of the details with it. Okay, well you know what, since I know so little about it and what it entails, I think instead of asking you questions, I'll just let you just shoot from the hip or whatever and tell us all about it. Yeah, sure. Uh, it came about around a year and a half ago. Uh, I was basically introduced uh, as a means of improving the efficiency of the healthcare system and making it more accessible uh, and available to patients uh, when they needed it in a timely manner. Now, having said that, when word first came out of it, people were coming in, oh great, I'll never have to go see the doctor again. Well, that's, that's not the case. Uh, it's only certain circumstances in which we can prescribe, and it's, uh, it's pretty well regulated. Um, when it first came out, what they, it's what they call level one prescriptive authority. And there's not, it doesn't involve any diagnosis or anything like that. It's for certain circumstances, basically to cover off legal and uh, liability issues, which we faced as pharmacists, in circumstances such as uh, like the first one is interim supplies pretty self-explanatory someone's been on a medication for a while they're gonna run out in two days I mean you know time flies also no it's the end of the month they're on a motor repeats and you can't get in to see the doctor for a week two weeks or maybe it's an out-of-town doctor or such and such forth and then they can come to us and now we have the ability to prescribe an interim supply to get them through until their next doctor's appointment um, and we, use, we do that a lot, basically. In the past, you know, it was like, here, we'll loan you some, and, you know, and then we'll take it off the next prescription. But there was legal issues with that, that it wasn't a legal prescription, and then who's responsible, who's liable for it, and what, who's, who's uh, I guess, license is what uh, covers that. Mm -hmm. So I'll have a, a question on that one, because it's got me thinking. So yeah. even if the previous prescription hasn't been, say, through a pharmacy, but it's through another yep. pharmacist, they could still come in for that interim scenario? Well, the thing is, is the previous prescription has to have been written by a doctor. Okay. So, and then the thing is too, is we can't continually write an interim supply prescription for the same medication. Right. Once we write it once, that's enough to get a person to the doctor. And then once a new prescription comes through from the physician, then down the road, we could do it okay. again. We so, just can't continually do it because you don't want people to be removed right. from the healthcare system. So if a person came in, let's say with a bottle, that, yep. that you know showed that this was you know the last of yep. three or whatever yep. they could still go on that basis for an interim absolutely so, yeah i mean there's other okay. means from which we do okay. it there's the new uh, government uh, pharmaceutical information program which we have to access we have to develop a prescription online it's very well regulated it's well informed and it's it's, it's worked great mm. um similar to that uh another prescription would be if someone's unable to access their medication say they uh they're visiting family you know from bc or wherever forget their stuff they come here i mean we have to go to process do the process of knowing exactly what they were taking mm -hmm. and we can prescribe an interim amount to or not an interim i guess because it's unaccessible to get yes. them through until they can get home and take their medication which is basically providing a continuation of therapy i mean and it's a, that's an important thing um a third thing under i guess what would be called the level one prescriptive authority is uh, emergency supplies. Um, I guess an example would be, uh, say someone's got asthma, they're having an acute asthma attack, wheezing, can't breathe. Uh, they don't have a prescription for their inhaler or the, the rescue inhaler. Um, to get, to wait to go to a doctor doesn't make sense or even to go to a hospital and wait and emerge. So then we can uh, prescribe what's needed and to get them through until they consult a physician. Mm. So, and then the fourth thing in that is, uh, dosage form changes. Sometimes people need to have the dosage form changed to make it more suitable for them. And uh, when we do that, it's developing a new prescription and covers it off. Yeah, that, so it really is a very useful service, isn't it? It is, it is. It yeah. really keeps things a lot more streamlined yes. and works well for people. Good, so if somebody came in, let's say, on an interim scenario, um, you know, as you say, it's, it's ideally until they get to the next appointment yes. with a doctor. Yeah. So how long would it be? Would you give them like a, a week's supply we or two weeks supply? Or, well, it depends or is there on the limitation situation. on that? Or? Th there's, there is a limitation. It depends yes. per case. If a person's, you know, I'm going to be at the doctor in two weeks, they discuss, they might be changing my therapy. Well, then we probably yes. give two weeks supply. We can give up to what a normal fill would be, say okay. a month or whatever yes. it would be. 
Um, furthermore to that, I mean, we have take we had to take extra training and whatnot to yes. to be granted these privileges to do this. The second phase of the prescribing is what's called minor ailment prescribing, and what that is is it involves more of a consultation with the patient, a little more time consuming, a little more in depth information, um, because we're getting information from the patient to actually develop or come up with an actual diagnosis for a list of certain conditions for which we can prescribe for. Um, I can just go through them quickly here. Sure, uh, go ahead. It's, the, it's, good, it's good stuff. Let's, it is, yeah, yeah, and a lot of people don't realize this. <laughs> you, you know, people in my own family didn't even realize you could do this kind of thing. One of the most common ones is for cold sores. Yes. Um, the way to treat them, a lot of people just use over-the-counter stuff, but we can prescribe antiviral, uh, oral medication, or a cream which is far superior to anything else you can get over the counter. And uh, when you need it, you need it now. Waiting past a certain amount of time, then it's ineffective. So making us accessible and being able to do that on an on-demand basis, uh, it's worked great. And oh, it's wow. really helped out a lot of people. Um, one of the other ones is for insect bites. Mm -hmm. uh, we can prescribe 1% hydrocortisone cream to take down itchiness and inflammation. And we've been doing it, this will be the second summer that we've been doing it. And every parent that's done it for their kids or for themselves, it works better than anything anything else out there well, for goodness. the itchiness. So again, it really is, it's a tremendous service, isn't it? So, it is, it, it works really good. Yeah, so if you had somebody that they, you know, they came and let's say they've got a regular uh, pharmacy that's outside this area. Yep. And they want a, a refill and you can do the refill, but let's say that they go through typically their, their insurance company through work or something, would it be good for them to have, say, their card that would show that, or do they just buy it when they come in because it's nope. from a different scenario? It, it, it doesn't matter. I mean, if they okay. normally have an insurance card, the, the insurance companies themselves recognize us as prescribers. We I can see. enter the same information and put it through yes. just like any other normal prescription if it was prescribed from a doctor or whoever. Excellent. Well, I wouldn't be surprised if we get some questions from people uh, from this one. Yeah. So uh, listen, folks, I'll bring this background on myself here for a minute. Uh, any questions that you have, remember we are offering that service as well, where you can simply uh, use the contact form, send in a question to Ryan, and when we give Ryan the question, we do not share your contact information. It's completely anonymous, okay? So keep the questions coming. Ryan, we really, really appreciate um, your assistance in this. It's I'll mention stuff. just a couple yeah, more I was going to say, is there anything else that well, we missed? Well, there is. There's just yes, a few yes. more other conditions. Oh, which, well, we, we better do it. My well, which we can just discuss in <laughs> further in a, in a future time. Um, some of the other conditions we can prescribe for would be mild to moderate acne, uh, allergic rhinitis, so for congestion in the nasal due to allergies and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Uh, diaper dermatitis or diaper rash, uh, oral ulcers known as basically canker sores, which mm -hmm. is a, a pretty uh, effective one as well, and then oral thrush. So, wow. I mean, those are the main ones that are it's limited to, but uh, yeah, I yes. mean, if you have any questions, come in and ask us. And, 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 that, and that's the bottom line, isn't it? If there's something that you've, you've not covered, Yep. In what we've gone through today, or a person has a has a question, I mean, again, they can send it in through the yep. through the form, or literally, they can just walk straight in here and uh, chat with you and get the answer, you know, right away. Absolutely, excellent. Thank you, sir. We appreciate it. Any idea what you're going to talk about next time? Well, we'll, we'll put you on the spot. <laughs> we're, we're not sure that the the options are endless, so we'll yeah. see what we come up with. <laughs> Sounds good, Ryan. Thanks again. Anytime. Take care. See ya.